Who is the best DC character? There's only two answers. What are you wearing? Blue overcoat, fedora. And one of their last names literally means testicle here in the UK. Harvey Bullock is a policeman who doesn't like Batman, but he's not corrupt. He's just really, really dim and likes to keep police business police business. What do you got there, vigilante? However, he's too loyal to Gordon to do anything. So there's a hilarious one-sided rivalry with Batman who doesn't really care about this dude despite being yelled at. Give it up. Now! Subsequently, Harvey Bullock kind of steals the show whenever he's on screen, because the moment he's present you kind of exactly know what he is and look forward to his innate range of emotions of him either being humbled or get more mad. The character contributes more than just giggles though, and it's something I noticed in Arkham Origins during this cameo. Who else would jump off a building to save your sorry ass? Did you feel that? In your pants. We're so used to seeing Gotham portray this with this dark hellhole filled with serial killers and corruption, but then there's also old Jimbo and his loyal department, filled with officers who either idealistically or begrudgingly support Batman. But the commission says you serve a purpose, so I go along. Harvey Bullock as a recognisable symbol represents this loyalty and as a result, every time I see him around, mainly in BTAS, he imbues this weird beauty to the world. There's hope, there's good people, a community of those who in their own ways not necessarily touched by tragedy, dysfunction or need for redemption, just want to do good. I've heard of kids being afraid of Santa, but they've been crying all day. Gotham is a hellhole that breeds ordinary heroic people independent from Batman. Normal recurring good people that are as reliable of a presence as there are reliable goons for the supervillains. All characters are embedded in different kinds of contexts as fictional beings in the world of the film, as artifacts in the film's textual structures, as symbols in its themes, and as symptoms in the socio-cultural frameworks of its production and reception. Now this quote from Edith's paper was talking about character in films, but it also applies with Harvey when it comes to him being an artifact that functions as a stylistic device. A good case study that exemplifies this is A Bullet for Bullock, written by Michael Reeves. All my height went to my cock. I picked this episode largely because Bullock's name is literally in the title, and it's also an episode deliberately focused on something outside of the usual outside of Batman and on the inner life of a minor character who represents the world he inhabits. It's also unusually cruel with a comedy punchline at the end. It opens with Harvey almost getting run over by an assassin and has death threats sent to him, so he asks for Batman's help. He's bent the rules too many times so an official investigation could unravel his entire career. Are you on the take? Watch it freak! I never took a dime from nobody! I just bend the rules a little sometimes. Harvey is a disgusting, unclean, rude tenant. Someone who bullies his landlord. Don't crowd me, dog, or I'll wipe my feet on you. And it's more comfortable seeing roaches in his apartment than other people. Huh! But at the same time, he's done good work. Vinny the Shark? Yeah. The dirt bag threatened me in open court. Ran a drug lab in South Gotham. I broke it up when I was in Vice. He got 10 to 20 in Stonegate. He's a good cop who puts away real criminals, and he's put away Vinny the Shark and his entire drug empire. Someone who just got out and is Batman's first suspect. The combined effect of all this paints Bullock as a sad figure whose toughness, passion, and commitment to his work has sacrificed his hygiene and connection with people. This guy's looking to whack me. Look on the bright side. You'll make the six o'clock news. He's a deeply isolated figure who doesn't have much left but a career that seeks only to punish him with paranoia and further loneliness. After 15 years working in this cesspool, I'd like to see how good you look. But Batman cares. Do you want to live, Bullock? Although Harvey is uncooperative with him. They do work well as a team, taking down Vinny. No, Bullock! Relax, cowhead. However, Vinny wasn't the person who sent the letters. Instead, on the way back home, it's actually Nevin, his landlord. How topical. You need to relax. Niven has literally gone mad from all the insults, slobbery, and devaluation of his building. Harvey's like, damn son. This. And there's a bit of regret you can see from him, especially since he wanted to move out anyways. Somebody like Vinny wants a poppy, that's no surprise. This. There's an equilibrium to Batman's world. Everyone turns into a case, either as a criminal or as a helper, in this case, Harvey is both detective and a victim. There ain't nobody else. 
As a result, he fits into this reality and creates dynamic properties where this is funny, sad and believably mundane. He's more than meets the eyes. What the blazes is going on here? Just call me Sam. I've been checking you out, Abner. Sure I am. Want to see my gun? I asked you to find a name, not hold my hand. Taxi! I want you to follow up on a lead. Hey, what am I, some wet-eared rookie? Uh-huh. Poor kid. My son of man up the river three months ago. You were right, Bullock. A lot of people don't like you. If you give up that right, you'll probably bore me to tears. So keep your trap shut, dog breath. Hey, pal! This is my life we're talking about here! You shoot the Santa! You wouldn't. Not you, dope! Oh, I guess I owe you for this. Forget it, Bullock. Yeah, I'd like to help you out, but, uh... Uh, uh... You were saying... Ah, uh, never mind. Yeah, I don't know, I just really want to make a Harvey Bullock video for some reason. I gave you a room, a place for the night. I'm so sorry to see you enter the fight. You said as a child, you always took off. Now it's sad just to see what's become of us. You mumbled something. Alright, so this was actually supposed to be a joke video, but then as I was writing it and I stumbled onto Edith's paper, all of a sudden it kind of became more of a proper essay, so it ended up having more of a mixed style to it, where it's got the introduction, literature review, and analysis sort of format to it, but it's more condensed and more casually framed. The plan is to keep developing the style. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon. I'm taking suggestions there now, so you're welcome to join a pretty fun community. Thanks, guys. <laughs>